Hi folks, if you are lucky enough to own a ZWO AM5 mount, you're probably aware that you can control that mount in four different ways, being with your hand controller, secondly by using your smartphone and the ASI mount app over Wi-Fi, thirdly by using your PC or laptop and the ASCOM driver and the USB cable, and fourthly by using an optional ASI Air. Well, in this video, I wanted to explain to you how to connect the AM5 using the first three options. And I'm planning a separate video about the ASI Air and the AM5 as this is somewhat more complicated. And in particular, I was rather impressed by the ASI mount app. So I will discuss that app in detail in this video. Now, before getting into how to connect the AM5 mount, it is important to first set up and polo align the mount correctly. And if you're unsure how to do that, you can check CWO's channel where you can find videos that show you how to set up the AM5. Now, if you want me to make a separate video about this, please let me know in the video description below and I will make a separate video about setting up the AM5. So the first and arguably also the easiest way to control your AM5 is with the joystick-like hand controller that comes with the mount. After you've set up and polar aligned the mount, simply put the plug of the hand controller in the hand controller port of the AM5 and you're basically done. Now this controller has four functions. First of all, you see that there is a directional joystick and you can use that joystick to slew the telescope on the mount. So pressing the joystick up, down or left, right will change the position of your telescope and your telescope mount in the direction you push the joystick. Now you can also press the joystick down to switch between high and low slew speeds. Now for example, it might be useful to first roughly align your mount with an object you want to observe using a high speed and then precisely align your mount with that object using a slow speed option. Now below the joystick, you'll find two additional buttons on the hand controller. The T button stands for tracking and it can be used to switch the sidereal tracking of the mount on and off. When switching it on, your mount starts to automatically track the objects in the night sky so you don't have to manually adjust the position of the mount once you're aligned with the object of interest. The second button can be used to cancel the tracking and return the mount to its home position. A short press will cancel the tracking and go to functions, while a long press returns the telescope to its home position, pointed towards the celestial pole. Now, although most of you are probably looking to wirelessly control the mount, the option of the hand controller may still be useful to visually align your mount with solar system objects like the moon or one of the planets in the night sky without the need to externally connect the mount over Wi-Fi or USB to your smartphone or computer. The second option to control your AM5 mount is by using the ASI mount app in your Play Store or App Store. Just download the ASI mount app to your smartphone or tablet. And I was a little surprised to see that the app is a little over 500 megabytes in size. But after having used it, I understand why. The whole ASI mount app features like a full virtual planetarium, much like the well-known Stellarium software, with the option to control your AM5 mount over Wi-Fi. So that's pretty awesome if you ask me. <laughs> so I'll give you a detailed rundown of this app. And importantly, if you want to use the app with the AM5, you first need to connect the hand controller to the hand controller port. So when you open the app for the first time, it first starts decompressing the app, which should take a few seconds. Now, after that, it asks permission to use your GPS data of your smartphone. And allowing this will enable the app to use the GPS coordinates on your phone to show the correct virtual sky at your location in the application. Now, interestingly, the app is also asking for permission to manage your telephone calls. Well, I'm not sure why, so I'll contact CWO and ask them why that is. Anyway, after that's done, the app will show you a virtual planetarium of the sky at your location, and it will scan to find the Wi-Fi signal of the ASI mount. Now, the mount needs to be powered on and the hand controller needs to be connected to the mount, as I said before, to receive the Wi-Fi signal of the mount on your smartphone or tablet. Now, that Wi-Fi signal of your mount will appear under available mounts and it will start with AMH underscore and then a specific figure for your mount. 
Now select that Wi-Fi signal to connect the app to your smartphone. Uh, if it asks for a default password, the default password of your Wi-Fi signal will be 12345678. So be sure to use that if you're connecting the AM5 to the ASI mount app for the first time. After you've connected the Wi-Fi signal, the app now shows a virtual planetarium with various icons and options you can use to control your mount. For instance, it shows a magnifying glass icon at the top left to search for objects in the night sky. It shows a field of view icon, a mount icon and a hexagonal icon on the bottom left. On the top right, it shows a compass icon and we can also see the arrows and slew speeds available to control your AM5 mount. I'll explain all the options for each of these icons in detail, but the first thing I recommend you to do is to check your latitude and longitude coordinates by clicking on the mount icon on the bottom left. Now this will bring you to the AM5 settings menu, and when you scroll down you can see LED long with the coordinates in latitude and longitude shown in degrees, arc minutes and arc seconds. Now you can adjust these coordinates by clicking on the figures and this allows you to manually input your latitude and longitude coordinates. Now if you're going to manually input your coordinates be sure to use the correct east-west setting for latitude and north-south setting for longitude depending on your position on earth. After this you can also change the language to English, Chinese or system default if needed. Now changing the language will prompt a message showing you that you'll have to restart the app after changing the language. So with the app correctly set up, let's return to planetarium mode and explore the possibilities of the ASI mount app. Now the FOV menu is very useful when you're going to photograph objects in the night sky and you want to know how big these objects will appear in your camera's field of view. Now clicking on the FOV icon will show you a menu starting with the option to turn the field of view indicator on or off. When you turn it on, the planetarium will show a red rectangle that demonstrates the field of view you will be getting with a particular camera and telescope combination. Now, In order to get a correct view, you need to input the camera sensor's width and height, as well as the focal length of the telescope you're using. Now the app comes with predefined sensor sizes for all the cameras released by ZWO, so you can click on Choose Camera to select the ASI camera that you are going to use. Now, if you are going to use a different camera from a different brand, you can also select Custom Camera and then you can manually input the correct width and height of your particular camera sensor. Unfortunately, I couldn't find an option to select an eyepiece that would actually be useful for those of you who want to use the mount for visual observations. Now You can click the scope focal length to input the focal length of the telescope you're using. And finally, you can also select additional reducers or Barlow lenses if you are using them and you can adjust the camera rotation angle. So let me select my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera my Edge HD 8 inch, which has a native focal length of 2032 millimeters, and my 0.7 reducer, which is one of the setups I often use to photograph some of the smaller deep sky objects in the night sky. When returning to planetarium mode, I can see a red rectangle that demonstrates the field of view I will be getting with this particular camera and telescope setup. The magnifying glass menu is all about finding, selecting and slewing to objects in the night sky. Clicking on the magnifying glass on the top left in planetarium mode will show you a very nice menu with tonight's best objects to observe or photograph. On the left you can see the name of the suggested object in right ascension and declination coordinates in the sky and the apparent magnitude and size of the object. On the right you can see a graph that shows the position of the object in the sky at any given time. So the y-axis of the graph demonstrates how high the object is in the night sky, ranging from 0 degrees on the horizon to 90 degrees directly overhead in the zenith, and the x-axis demonstrates a timeline ranging from 6 p.m. in the evening until 6 a.m. in the morning. The red line of the graph demonstrates how high the object is at any given time. And finally, the compass on the right shows the position of the object. By clicking on one of the objects, you'll get the option to select Go To, 
or center. When selecting go to, the mount will automatically slew to and start tracking the selected object in the sky. For example, when I select Venus and I click go to, the mount will slew to Venus and will start tracking Venus automatically in sidereal mode. When I select Venus and I click center, the virtual planetarium will show me the position of Venus in the sky at my location. Finally, you can use the magnifying glass to search for a custom object of your choice. For example, when I'm searching M51, it shows the Whirlpool Galaxy with all the information I just mentioned. If I click on M51, the app gives me the option to go to or center M51. Let me click on center. Now the app will show me where M51 is in the night sky and the red rectangle will show me how big this object will be when I want to photograph it using my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera and my Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope I've selected in the field of view menu. In planetarium mode I can also click on go to and that will slew the AM5 mount to M51 in the sky and it will automatically start tracking that object. The blue rectangle shows the current position of the telescope in the sky. Let's get back to the AM5 setting menu on the bottom left to see what kinds of options we have. When the mount is fully connected, it shows the position of the mount in right ascension and declination. Again, it is important that your mount is correctly aligned with the celestial pole, so be sure to do that before using the mount. We already discussed the option to adjust your latitude and longitude position in let long by adjusting these figures and the mount also shows the date and time which are in sync with your smartphone or tablet. You can initiate tracking of the night sky by clicking on different tracking options. The sidereal mode can be used for almost all objects in the night sky with the exception of the moon and the sun which have a specific lunar and solar tracking speed option. When clicking on each of these options, the mount will start tracking the objects in the sky at the selected speed. You can click on Go Home to slew the mount back into the home position it was in after you finished your polar alignment. So by clicking on Go Home and by pressing Start, the mount will stop tracking objects in the sky and return to that home position. You can also calibrate that home position in the app. Clicking on Calibrate shows you a menu where you can adjust and save the home position of your telescope. Now, personally, I wouldn't recommend doing that. It would be better to redo your polar alignment if you notice that your tracking is off rather than adjusting the home position here, but that's just my opinion. You can adjust the loudness of the beep sound or even mute the sound of the AM5 by selecting one of these options. This is useful when you don't want neighbors to get annoyed. You can also adjust the mount mode from equatorial to LDS. Now, I would recommend using the AM5 primarily in equatorial mode, especially when you're going to use it for astrophotography. Now, it would go too far to explain the LDS mode and its potential benefits, so I will provide a link to a video in the description below so you can learn more about that. The AMH management system allows you to update your mount to the latest firmware. Just click on firmware and check if there's any update available. I'm currently using version 1.1.2 in this video. When you click on network, you can select your home Wi-Fi network and you can connect to that network so the app can use your home Wi-Fi. When you scroll down, you can also adjust the Wi-Fi name and password of the hand controller of the mount by clicking on edit. I'm just going to leave this at default for now. And finally, I'm not sure what switch AM5 means, but I think this might be an option when you have multiple AM5 mounts you want to control using this app. As I have only one AM5 mount, clicking on this option will generate a message that there are no other mounts available. The hexagonal menu on the bottom left allows you to adjust the appearance of the virtual planetarium. You can switch on or off indicators like the meridian, celestial equator and coordinates. You can also switch constellation drawings and the ground on or off. By clicking on the compass icon on the top right, you can point your smartphone towards the night sky and the virtual planetarium will show you the part of the night sky your smartphone is pointing to. This may be useful when you visually see an object in the sky and you want to point your telescope to that object. Finally. In the planetarium mode, you have the option to adjust your slew speed from 1 to 5 and you can move the mount around by using the arrow buttons in the direction you want. This can be useful. 
For example, you can slew to a planet in the sky, but you may find out that that planet is not exactly in the field of view of your telescope. You can then use the arrow buttons to get the object you want to see in the telescope's field of view, and after doing so, you can click on Sync to sync the position of the telescope mount to the position of the object in the virtual planetarium. All in all, the ASI Mount app is an impressive app that allows you to intuitively control your mount over Wi-Fi using your smartphone or tablet. A third and one of my favorite options is to connect your mount via a USB cable to your PC or laptop using an ESCOM driver that can be downloaded from ZWO's website. If you're going to use an ESCOM connection, be sure to also download the ESCOM platform software first. I'll provide a link to both the driver and the ESCOM platform download in the video description below. First, download and install the platform and the driver before continuing with this tutorial. In order for ESCOM to work, you need to connect your mount to your computer or laptop via a USB cable. Connect the cable to the USB port on the AM5 and the USB port on your computer. After that, go to Device Manager and check the USB port connections to see the exact COM port the AM5 is connected to. After that, you can launch the ASI mount app, select the correct COM port and press connect to initiate a connection between your mount and your computer. The ASI mount app is pretty basic and straightforward, which is fine. You can use the arrow keys to slew the mount and you can adjust the slewing speed of the mount. Also, you can click on firmware update to check for new versions of this ASCOM driver. It is also important to click on advanced features and input the correct latitude and longitude in degrees, arc minutes and arc seconds. Also, press sync from PC to mount to sync the time and date of your computer with your AM5 mount. After this, the mount can be used by any astrophotography software that has the ASCOM standard. For example, in PHD2, you can select the ASI mount and connect to the mount. Be sure to disconnect the ASI mount driver before reconnecting the driver in PHD2. I hope these tutorials were useful for you. If you want more videos like this one, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I hope you have lots of fun with the AM5 and I wish you clear skies.